I had the most interesting conversation with two individuals who are also building the gravity flyer. What came out of it was a working theory in my mind of where to move forward with this thing. And it's a little bit different than where I was going with it. So I'm kind of excited to get into this. So let's just do this. I'm going to go through the gravity flyer a little bit and identify some parts real quick just so we're all on the same page. We're going to start with the top with the piezoelectric and we're going to go with the transducer. Basically all we're looking to achieve out of this is a vibration in the craft. So it's like when you get the chills. You feel it going through your body, you can feel the electricity pulsating through your body and you get goosebumps and you get a charge. It's basically the same thing that we're creating in the gravity flyer. We're just looking to get vibration out of it. Not anything more than that. What it's going to do is it's going to amplify a charge later. But that's just a simple understanding of what we're getting out of it. Now, let's identify the Tesla coil. Is there a frequency we need to look for? Is there something else we need to look for? Really? What it ultimately comes down to is it's an energy compensator. As energy is pulled from the craft, it compensates with it, and it puts energy back into it. Now, what are the plates doing? Basically, the plates are spinning and you have magnets on the bottom plate. Because the craft is aluminum, you're getting eddy current out of it. So you're getting eddy current in the center disc, and you're getting it in the top disc. Now, the last part, you're using high voltage DC from a flyback transformer. What are you looking for here? You're not looking to create a spark. You're looking to create ions or put it this way, a uh, static field is what you're trying to look for in this. More, more specifically, a static field. You're just trying to get those discs to fill up with the static energy. It is so low on the amount of power needed. It's quite opposite of what I ever thought it was. We're looking at maybe 12 volts, very little amps in this to get it running. So you're getting a very big amount of energy put into it. So or it's not a spark gapped energy. Again, there's a big difference there. When we create the high voltage projects, we're creating a sparked energy or we're creating a uh, plasma field. You're not looking for that in this. This field you're not going to see. It's going to be very low on the amount of power going into it, but it's going to be very high in the amount of energy that's around it. So we have now identified the parts. Let's move from here. How do we make this thing work? So. There's a very specific way to turn it on, and it makes a lot of sense. First thing you do, turn on the motors. What does that do? We're creating eddy current. First thing in your mind, okay, eddy current's turned on. Once you have a sufficient amount of eddy current, you move on to the voltage source, which is a DC flyback. You turn that on. Again, you're pulling that energy into those discs. Now, What's the next thing you need to do? You are now turning on your Tesla coil. Your Tesla coil, again, energy compensator, will now have power reserves for you for this craft. What's the next part? You're going to cycle your uh, ultrasound. So what is that doing? As we put everything in there, you have a field growing around this. It's going to take the whole craft, not just the center disc, it's going to take the whole craft. And it's going to go ahead and do that same thing we talked about. It's going to put the power into it, and it's going to give it an extra boost of power right there. It's going to vibrate everything. So it's like pulling in the power from this device. But it's like an old Chevy motor. You're going to prime it. You're going to prime it again. Like three or four times you're going to prime this thing. Little known fact about everything in this world. As you set a pathway for things to go, they tend to revolve in that same pathway every time 
until you break that pathway. So it's the same concept here. We're bringing it in, we're bringing it in, bringing it in, and we're getting it used to the same thing, to understanding the same language every time. Now, once we bring in everything right there, it's primed and ready to go. So, what's the theory? Well, when everything comes in at once and everything's running together like it's supposed to, what you're going to get is a voltage spike in energy. Now, for about 90% of you out there, you're going to focus on this spike. For the last 10%, this is where the understanding is already. You've already jumped from the spike to what caused it. What is missing in a voltage circuit that creates a spike? It creates a vacuum. It's pulling out energy somewhere in order for the energy to spike. Again, Tesla coil is a compensator. That's where the spike's coming from. It's now taking that energy and it's pulling it back in to the craft as you pulled it out. So, what is pulling out of the craft? Well, that would be seen as your lift factor, if you can see it this way. The amount of energy is now not equal to the amount that you're putting in in each level we talked about. You're putting in energy here from the high voltage source. You're putting in energy here for the transducer and the ultrasound. You're putting energy from the Tesla coil into it. You're putting eddy current in as the energy. You can add them all up. It is going to be far shy of what you're actually pulling out of this. The sum of the parts is not equal to the parts themselves. It's equal to the reaction from the sum of the parts. So, what's going on? It's actually telling you that it's pulling in a ton more energy from outside sources in order to build it up. Then, it's ripping it out of it all at one time in a great thrust. Then what happens? You now have a vacuum of energy in it. Now that vacuum energy is being filled up by that Tesla coil. It's trying to compensate for this. I will tell you this. If the inventor tells you that you are getting much more than what you think you're getting, then maybe you're not putting enough into it. What do I mean by that? If he says he gets this enormous amount of energy out of it, you got to start looking at, is your spike high enough? Did you get that spike high enough to get the thrust factor? That's what I mean by that. So if you are getting that, then you should have lift. If you're not getting that, then you're not getting enough. So something in it has to change. Now, Based on the environment that you're in, that could be the factor that's changing it. So, it could be that in that air that you're in, it's pulling more energy from it. Different times of day, you're going to get a different reaction. So, it's important to note that when you do this. Now, that's the kind of the working theory on the gravity flyer so far that I have. Other people may interpret it a different way. But it gives you your lift factor. It gives you the energy processes that are going on. It takes all the combination of everything inside of this, and it builds a cohesive unit. One thing I will warn you about, though, what you have to look at in the Tesla coil is sometimes it's going to try to pull more energy than what you think it does. So you could say, okay, I put in a driver. The driver's 12 volts. It works on 12 volts. Okay, we know the capacitors work on the 12-volt level. However, in every circuit, sometimes it tries to draw more energy than what you think it does. That's why you trip your breakers. It is pulling either more amps or more volts. What does that mean to you? Your power source that you use is important. If he's using a 12-volt battery, I suggest you use the same. If he's using the wall socket, I suggest you use the same. However, understand parts of the world are different than America. 110 out of the volts in America, 220 
out of it in other countries. If they are using that, understand this, they have a bigger power draw they can pull from. My experience, when you have that spike, it sets everything on fire and blows up your whole project. However, if it's in an instant and then goes away, it may not do that. It may just produce a spike. So just be aware that that may be going on. So if the inventor tells you a 12 volt battery, and that's what he uses and makes it work, I suggest you use the same thing because of that reason. Anyway, that's my working theory on this so far. Hopefully I was clear about it. Hopefully you understand it. If you have questions, please ask. I will also include links to the two people I was speaking with yesterday, and you can watch their sites. Very entertaining stuff. They use graphs and other things that I don't use right now. I have an oscilloscope. I will be using it in the future. But they're very good at this stuff. They have identified quite a bit more than I have on this. So thank you to them. And I'll leave their links. And we can go on and build this thing. I hope very soon with what we just learned. We can actually get this thing up and going. I think it's right around the corner. I think it's going to be one of the greatest things that we ever do. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed everything. Like, subscribe, do all that fun stuff. And let's get this thing going for once. Thank you and have a great day. I wanted to share this with you. It's not the gravity flyer, but it is a schematic from another uh, device like it. And I just want you to see something here. You'll see at the top here that we have a bunch of little disc looking things. Again, like the gravity flyer plates. I want to also show you the magnets on the bottom there, north and south. North is always out. And then again, we see the little lines coming from the magnets there. They go into a little lever that shows how much of it or which direction they want to push this energy in. I find it ironic that if you look at all this stuff and you compare it to the gravity flyer and the explanation I just gave, it looks like this inventor had the same idea. Now, is there rotating parts in it? Yes. Uh, is there an actual outside of the craft? Well, yes, it looks like a funny shaped triangle or marked with the F label on it here. So just understand this. Other inventors are building the same thing. They have the same idea in mind. So when you look at the gravity fire and the way I explained it, understand it's more than just an understanding of one thing and a concept between three people we talked about. Other inventors are looking at the exact same thing for anti-gravity. So I just thought it would be worth noting that there is this thing out there. And there is a little bit more to the theory and why I think there's a big force coming out of it. And it could be directional in where you put it. And it could apply the force in different directions. So hopefully this is interesting to you. I encourage you to build your own and find out your own answers. But... This is kind of why I have more of that theory in mind when I look at this thing. Anyway, thank you very much.